lie to you. The show that sorts the facts from the fibs. And on Lee Mack's team tonight, she presents The One Show, which is now part of British life. Without it, millions of families would have to eat their tea in silence. <laughs> it's Alex Jones! <laughs> The presenter of the extremely popular daytime quiz show Pointless, whose fans will no doubt be tuning into this show tonight. So, a big welcome to students, the unemployed, and the bedridden. <laughs> it's Alexander Armstrong. And uh, on David Mitchell's team tonight, well, 12 years ago, he was honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award. He didn't take the hint, he's still here. It's Chris Tarrant. <laughs> And uh, first, light lunch. Now, the great British Bake Off. Is there any meal she won't exploit for her own financial gain? <laughs> Mel Gedroyd. <laughs> and so we start with round one Home Truths, where our panelists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact. From the fiction, and we'll start with Alex. Oh, you go. here we go. I once lost Julian Lloyd Webber's cello because I was chatting up a parking attendant. <laughs> well, David and team. A lot of factors there. Lot of factors. Why were you in possession of Julian Lloyd Webber's cello? Because he had lent it to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Why would he lend you his cello? Well, not exactly lend. You I was it. kind of, I was kind of looking after it. Where were you, Alex? I was in Manchester. Right. Yeah. And was he playing? Was he doing a gig or something? He was doing. Yeah, he was like with an orchestra, but he had his own. He had his own solo part, so he played. That I know, bit. an orchestra. They all have. They have an instrument each. Don't they? <laughs> yeah, but David, he had a special part. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. But he, for which he didn't need his cello, it was... Uh, <laughs> he asked you to hold the cello... This is before. ...and go and check on the parking scenario <laughs> in the middle of the symphony. This was before. Before the concert. OK. Mm. So did you know him? I hadn't met him before, no. But what was the great attraction of the parking attendant? Very handsome, very fit. It was very hot. How could you tell him a big hat like that and his jacket up He there? didn't have a hat tell? on. They were, they were very modern parking attendants. Well, he didn't have a hat on. I think we need to analyse this story chronologically. Right. Yes. <laughs> Just that again. Now, it is the day of the concert. Right. Yes. <laughs> Dawn nice. breaks. Right. Where are you and where is Julian Lloyd Webber? <laughs> Julian Lloyd Webber and I are both in Manchester. When did you meet? In the car park. Yeah. <laughs> Sound like, like a true Welsh girl. No, the, the car park. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid the car park is not an acceptable answer to the question, right. when did you meet? Right. Because the car park is a place, not a time. <laughs> Let me set the scene. OK. So, I'm in the car park. Yeah. With the car park attendant. Of course right. you are. Yeah. The car park attendant is just there. He hasn't got a hat on, he's not that official. <laughs> he's just generally hanging around the car park all sexy. He's just hanging out. Yeah. What's he wearing at the time? Has he got anything on? Is he, is he naked? <laughs> he's got jeans on and a t-shirt. Jeans and a t-shirt? This is just jacket. some guy. Some bloke. <laughs> He's told you he's on. a car park attendant because no. he wants to sound important. Yeah. <laughs> Is that important? Yeah, it's the sexiest <laughs> thing you can say. Everyone knows that. Julian Lloyd Webber yeah. walks in with walks his cello. In with his right. cello. Which weighs about four tonne? No, they're not that heavy. Well, no. Well, no, no. They're, they're not, not that heavy. No, and for no. someone like Julian, who's probably got a bit of sinew and bicep because of all his playing, mm. it would be very light. <laughs> yeah. It's that's not, it's not that's how they heavy. pick cellists, isn't it? They yes. pick the ones that can carry it. They can, <laughs> you, can, you can teach anyone to play it, but it's the carrying it that's exactly. the trick. Exactly. <laughs> he pitches up. He's on his phone. Yeah. Oh, He's while the carrying the cello. the cello. Yeah. What a guy. <laughs> Were you trying to get off with the car park man because you wanted to not pay for your own parking? It's difficult to know if you're a car park attendant whether any relationship you're in is genuine. <laughs> whether is it exactly. me or is it just for is the it, free yeah, parking? Exactly. <laughs> Did he just hand the cello to you with a yes. nod like that while he was on the understanding no, that you would know what he meant? No, he'd put it down on his side and then just went, 
<laughs> what happens then? Yes, this is crucial. Then, Julian comes off the phone, taps me on the shoulder, where's my cello? I look round, cello gone. <gasps> oh! Uh, what? No! It was a car parking attendant. <laughs> Who took the cello then? The cello yeah. had made its way into the concert hall. Of course on it's own. On its own. On its own. <laughs> <laughs> the very best cellos can do that. <laughs> well, somebody has taken the cello, gone into the concert hall with the cello, Julian and me flummoxed. Flummoxed? So, so this is not an attempt to steal the cello, this is a do-gooder seeing an unattended cello and thinking, well, I can't leave that lying around. Someone could steal it, I'd better steal it. <laughs> Citizen, so that's worth millions. It's on its own. I'll take it in. Why were you at this concert? What was your ostensible role? I was a runner researcher. So I was working on a television programme that they were making. That's new information. You didn't say that. I'm suddenly yeah, coming round to I Julian's know. point of view. So what do you think, David? What are you going to say? It's utter, utter nonsense. You think it's nonsense? I'm going to say she's lying. Li you both I'm think she's say lying. She's lying, yeah. She's lying in well, the I heart. certainly. I, see, I think it's true. Do you? But not enough to overrule. I, I haven't. <laughs> oh, don't say that, because now you. Well, no, I, it's a very rarely that I overrule. <laughs> At the <laughs> moment, I believe in democracy. Yeah. But if, we, if it turns out you guys are wrong, I may lose my belief in democracy, and <laughs> this could become a police state. <laughs> So your answer is? We're going to say it's a lie. Saying it's a lie. Right. <sighs> Alex Actually, Jones. no, we're going to say it's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, <laughs> police state hey, time. Oh, we're going to oh, say it's oh, true. Oh, I like that. I, I like that. I find that arousing. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> truth or lie? Rob, you should have to take the first answer on this programme. It's true. <laughs> no! Yes. It's true. Uh, Alex did lose Julian Lloyd Webber's cello because she was chatting up a parking attendant. Right, next up, it's Xander. Oh. I once prevented a burglar from breaking into my house by hiding behind the door and barking like two different dogs. <laughs> At him. David's team. First up, please do the two different dogs that you did. And say what the dogs were. OK, well, I, I, I doubt that Xander, in, in his state of panic, went, first I'll do a Yorkshire Terrier, <laughs> then I'll do... No, not an Airedale, no. a Retriever. I, this I, can't is... do it. I can't do a Retriever. I can't do a Retriever, I've tried. No, I, what I tried to do... <laughs> the, the effect I was going for was of scratching paint and going... <laughs> <laughs> what I wanted to give an illusion of was weight. Weight and snuffling. So um, I went for. Oh, I went for Has anyone got Scooby Snacks? <laughs> and dog <laughs> two, the different dog. <laughs> Maybe a smaller dog, the mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> one was my. One was this. No, the other one. I, I'm just worried about this. But it was. Go. <laughs> what? <laughs> you just frightened this. You... Did he run off? Did he break into the house, Chris? No. You're crouching down behind a door. Yes. And a burglar is also coming through the door. Well, what was happening was the burglar was busy, was, was at the door trying to force his way in by shoulder barging. The door wasn't open, but he was, uh, he was trying to break the jam. So, so this was at night. And is your bed yes, right by your, is so, your bed right by your front door? No, it's not. My, my bed is in my bedroom. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought because that's the last so you place thought, to hello, look. somebody shoulder barging the it, front it, door. Somebody, yeah. I was woken up by thunk, thunk, thunk on the door, and I was just thinking, what, what do I do? So did you hear he was barging away? Boom, boom. Yeah. Then you were then suddenly snuffling away at the other side of the door, yeah. and I, then he what? And then what? He paused, did he? He paused. And then, and then he went away. I think it weirded him out. Why didn't you do the noise of a scurry dog? It sounded like a hamster. <laughs> this is a very big hamster. That would that's that would, scary, yeah. actually. Yeah. That's big actually hamster. very scary. But don't you have a burglar alarm, Zander? Yeah, I never set a burglar alarm. Not on national no. television. Hang on. <laughs> Not... <laughs> okay, David. What are you going to say? Truth well, or lie? What do you think, Chris? I think it's so daft that he's so daft. 
And it's such a ridiculous vision. I think it's almost certainly true. Now? I'm the yin to your yang. Are you really? I'm saying it's a lie, a big yeah. fat one. I want you to override me again, David. No, I, <laughs> I want you to override me. I'm sorry, if I do that, if I do that again, it won't be special. <laughs> I just don't think a burglar would try and shoulder barge the front door. Oh, yeah. I, I think a murderer might try and shoulder barge the front door. <laughs> so therefore your answer is? Uh, lie. Yeah. Lie. OK. Yeah. Uh, Xander, was that the oh. truth or was it in fact a lie? Well, I'm sorry to tell you, it is in fact a lie. Oh. Oh. Yes, it's a lie. Uh, Xander didn't prevent a burglar from breaking into his house by barking like two different dogs. I mean, of course, it's a lie when burglars break into Xander's property, they still have to walk up the path, swim the moat, and <laughs> slay the dragon before getting to the front drawbridge. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, David's team are in the lead by two points to nil. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. And it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Sid. <laughs> Tarrant, what is Sid to you? This is my dentist, Sid, and I had to drive her to A and E after biting her finger during a checkup. <laughs> right, Mel, could you explain how you know Sid? This is Sid. We once posed as members of an orchestra to gain backstage access to meet our idol. Finally, David, what is your relationship with Sid? Um, this is Sid. Uh, last year... <laughs> Sorry. I just... There's something about you. I don't think you know any women or anyone called Sid. <laughs> In which case you'll be saying that it's a lie. Correct. Uh, this is Sid. Lie. <laughs> this is Sid. Last year, she rescued me when a seaside donkey went haywire with... <laughs> with me on its back. Can I just say... I mean, trapped my earlier comment. True. <laughs> so, there we have it. Uh, Chris's disgruntled dentist, Mel's orchestral imposter, or David's seaside saviour. Lee, where do you want to start? Well, should we start? Let's start with Chris. What was she doing that made you bite down so hard? <laughs> <laughs> She's actually a very accomplished dentist. Her real name is Sydney. Sydney. Matthews. She is the junior partner in a company called Matthews and Pretty in Weybridge in Surrey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who are Sorry, her real dentists. name is Sydney. Yeah. Sydney. Sydney. Girl's name Sydney. I, I couldn't understand what he was saying, but now someone's shouted it really loudly in Welsh. It's a lot clearer. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, sorry, Chris, say it again. I fix up to go and have a temporary crown taken out and put a, the proper one in. Oh, yeah. Coronation, um, was it? Yeah. <laughs> You're getting above yourself, Tarrant. So she starts doing this little bit of drilling, and of course you've got so much good in your mouth. I'm going, it really hurts, I want to detect it. And she says, what? At which point I bit her finger, in fact two fingers, really quite badly. <laughs> and she is pouring blood. And then has Sid treated you since? No, but she's due to in about three months, so I'm trying to be quite nice to her. Right, do you want to, to move on to another okay. suspect? Mm. David, what, what did it do, the donkey? It ran suddenly in one direction with me on its back. No. Yes. Where were you? I, I bet he I says Blackpool. The... <laughs> no, I was Where on the beach. It was in Norfolk. And a beach in Norfolk. Do you know which beach? I know Norfolk quite well. Which, which beach in Norfolk was it? Oh, damn. <laughs> 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 it was uh, Great Yarmouth. When was this? It's about, it was last year. Do okay. they let adults ride donkeys? Good question. Ask him. Yes, they do. They do, they did. <laughs> I got on the donkey, it went oh. haywire. What? what? You what? saying I'm a liar? <laughs> Donkey went haywire and Sid rescued me. But what scared the donkey? Yeah, well, I can answer that. What, what scared... <laughs> you haven't explained why you were on the donkey. Um, when I look at you, I don't think donkey. <laughs> Thank you. I well, think Mel the, does. The aim was... <laughs> One child of uh, some friends of mine wanted to have a donkey ride and then sort of was a bit nervous of the donkey ride 
and and I said, well, I'd have a donkey ride to sort of demonstrate that it was, you know, <laughs> fine and safe. Oh, oh and, so it was a disaster. A it was a disaster. Yeah. It was an absolute yeah. disaster. It was a very, very sad day. Did you have to pay for the ride? Uh, I think so, yeah. Do you remember roughly what? Well, that was. I think, it, I, I think for roughly about a thousand pounds. I have been less, less than a thousand. Certainly not a million. It, would it be not fair a million to say, pounds, it... and it wasn't like four p. <laughs> David, how did Sid rescue you? She had a, a geographical advantage on the donkey because mm -hmm. I don't think I'm not. I don't think I'm being rude to Sid to say that she probably couldn't have matched this crazed beast for speed. <laughs> she was over where the donkey was headed, sort of near there, and was able to intercept and grab the bit of string that's attached to a donkey's face. <laughs> <laughs> it's like having it's Zara like... for this with us, isn't it? Yeah. Really you is. have literally never string. seen a donkey in your life. <laughs> right, what about, what about Mel, then? Just remind us again of your story. This is Sid. Yeah. And we once posed as uh, members of an orchestra yeah. mm -hmm. to, to meet our idol. Right. Who, who's the idol, just for fun? Leslie Judd, the, um, <laughs> the uh, ex-Blue Peter presenter. You don't need to tell me who Leslie Judd is. <laughs> so, does Leslie Judd also play in an orchestra? Not that I know of. What, what was she of, doing what there? What was she doing there? She was hosting the event. Where was it? It was in Oxford Town Hall. And you were how old? 16. You say you posed we, I mean, as, as orchestra yeah. members. How? Did you go and buy an instrument? We borrowed from a friend, uh, funnily enough, a cello case. Well, that's all you'd need, cos one of you gets in it. Yeah. <laughs> so, hang on, when you were 16, I'm just thinking this through. Leslie Judd, as we all know, is a Blue Peter presenter back in the glorious uh, the heyday Fab of, Four. The Fab Blue Four. Peter. Exactly. No, when, it's Purvis when, Singleton Judd. When yeah. grown-ups used to, <laughs> yeah. when grown-ups used to host exactly. Blue Peter, yeah, uh, great times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did it work? We got past security. <laughs> I'm not sure about this security, but just to be honest with you, I can imagine a meeting. Town Hall. Oxford Town Hall. with are going. Hey, we got on next week. <laughs> Leslie Judd is hosting <laughs> an orchestra. We're going to need some security. <laughs> Did she sign anything for you? She did, yep. I had a Blue Peter annual. Yeah. I think Leslie was in circus gear on the front. I've got that one. Oh, that's it. Yes. <laughs> All right, we need an answer, so... What are you going to say? I think it's Chris. You think Chris? Because it's a lady. Sid, more importantly, yeah. looks like she could be a very good dentist. No, you see, I have to disagree. I disagree. If we're going by looks alone, I'd say she's more likely to have manhandled a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't just go by looks, can we? I think she looks like a really lovely friend of Mel's. We need an answer, so... Alex mm. thinks it's Chris. Chris. Are you sticking with that? Are I'm you... sticking 100%. And me, presumably. You think me? <laughs> Despite my real gut reaction that it's David, <laughs> I would say, of the two, we will go with Mel. Ah! Or will we go with Chris? <laughs> Split the difference. Me! <laughs> Go on, I'll say Mel. You're saying Mel. OK, so, Sid, would you like to reveal your true identity? Uh, my name is Sid, and Mel and I posed as members no! of an orchestra <laughs> in order to meet our idol. Yes, Sid and Mel did once pose as members of an orchestra in order to get backstage and meet Leslie Judd. Thank you very much, Sid. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but against the clock. We will start with... <coughs> it's Lee. I can always remember all my ex-girlfriend's names and the order in which I went out with them because their initials happened to make the acronym Bermuda. <laughs> <laughs> OK, off we go. <laughs> What? B. B. Will you please give me the names of all your ex-girlfriends <laughs> and make the acronym Bermuda as quickly as possible, please. <laughs> OK. Brenda. Oh, Brenda. Brenda. <laughs> C. 
superb. Brenda yeah. is still as popular a name as ever. Yeah. Uh, e. Ethel. I'm helping you. What's the next one? Uh, Ethel. E. Is it Ethel? No, it's Enid. not Ethel. Enid. No, it's Emma. not Enid. Have another guess. <laughs> Erin. Sorry? Erin. 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 Okay. Um, I've just spelled Bermuda. <laughs> Well, I know, I'm real. I was joking. Yes. Sorry. Uh, R. Oh. That was oh, R. Oh. Oh. That Rasputin. was actually that was actually regime. Sorry. Sorry. Regime. 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 As in regime change. No, no, no. no. <laughs> next, next up after after regime. Regime was the lovely Molly. 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 Yeah. Molly, yeah. Molly. I could tell you a thing or two about Molly, but this isn't the time. No, you can. Next one. What about you? You're you, right. This is the weird one. This is the weird one, right? <laughs> yeah. They're all a bit weird. N not actually her name, right? But in my nickname for her, Yuna. <laughs> Yuna. What was her real name? Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you call Sally Yuna? Because Yuna Stubbs played Aunt Sally in uh, Words of Gummidge. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's well, very good. Dave. That is very good. He's good. Yeah, Dave, Dave, experimental year. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forgive you. <laughs> yeah. Happy days, Dave. Happy days. Dave. Dave, the D, that's what you're saying. The D I'm not. is Dave. Of course I'm not. OK. Delia. <laughs> not the Delia. And may I say, not my mother, who was called Delia. True story. <laughs> Definitely not her. But that's why it popped I into your head now as you were making it up. <laughs> and A was Alex. Oh. That certainly is a serendipitous <laughs> series. Yeah. Yeah. If that it wasn't serendipitous, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> what, was, what was the M again? What? The M again. Molly. And the E was... What? <laughs> the E. I'll tell you exactly what the E was. The E was... E was. <laughs> it was, in fact. I'll tell you exactly... <laughs> The D. Give me a D. The D was Mummy. Deidre. <laughs> Deidre. <laughs> the E. Give me an E. Erin. The B. Give me a B. That was a long time ago. Lisa. Yeah. Brenda. And the R. And the R was uh, reg regime. Regime. <laughs> Little regime. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, regime. It's a name, isn't it? Tell me, it's a name. <laughs> <laughs> Anything's a name. Well, Anything's a name, isn't it? I went out with a girl called Cupboard for three weeks. <laughs> Not a joke. Jenny where did Cupboard come in the Bermuda <laughs> list? Oh, Bermuda she, she was. She was before I, I invented the acronym system. Sorry, it was a system. It, was, it didn't happen by accident. Uh, you, you were seeking out people well, beginning with these letters. What was it about the island of Bermuda? Well, because all my ex-girlfriends went missing. <laughs> So what do you think, David? What, well, what does your team think? I think it's a lie. Would he go out with somebody called Brenda? What do you mean, would I go? <laughs> yes, she was Miss World, right? She came yeah. and she said to me, I really like you. And I went, I like you. What's your name, Brenda? Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it going to be, David? Uh, I, well, think, I think... I mean, I think it's preposterous because it's preposterous. <laughs> I think it... Yes, I think it's a lie. I think it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie? <laughs> yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, Lee. Were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? Of course I was telling you a lie. <laughs> oh, yes, well done. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Uh, Lee's ex-girlfriends do not form an acronym that spells Bermuda, although they have formed a support group. <laughs> Next. <coughs> it's Alex. Oh. I can tell if someone is a good dancer just by the way they smile. David's team. Alex, look at me. <laughs> Turn what, what? your head a little bit. <laughs> and now this way. Now do it while she's dancing. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why? Yeah, well, it's why? true then. <laughs> why, but why? What is it about, though? Yeah. Because people who are good oh, at dancing... Will you stop doing that? I find it a bit disturbing, David. <laughs> it's just a bit like dead to say for you, David. Really? <laughs> What, 
what is it? Yeah, what is it about? Yeah, people, what do you look for? Well, pe people who are good at dancing will look naturally smug. What? Smug? What, what are you saying? <laughs> now, you're putting on a smug face. No, he's not. <laughs> And people who are good at dancing have shorter teeth than you. <laughs> it's just something about dancers. They seem to be a little bit underdeveloped in the tough thing. Are they making up for their short teeth with, by, by Could learning be. to I dance? I don't know, but it seems to be a pattern. They... That's what I found doing extensive research. So I'll go round you all now. Open up. <laughs> You could be all right. Oh, that's that's a backhanded compliment. <laughs> <laughs> a smug, short tooth no. person. <laughs> Not mine. Go on. <laughs> Rob. Rob, he's got quite long teeth. <laughs> no. <laughs> the thing is, Rob, look. You get up there and prove her wrong. I just want to say, Rob, I've got a lot of respect for your commitment to the show. Yeah. I mean, I'm no Bruno or Len. I'm no Bruno or Len. Hasn't she got a Hang stupid on, you're voice? you're taking them <laughs> What is... Does anyone know how large Fred Astaire's teeth are? Small. Small. Didn't have any, Small. just gums. <laughs> he had little, tiny little... Like that, no. Tiny. Just tiny. Like... Up, up, I am in, I'm home. <laughs> So what are you going to say, David? Uh, Mel, do you think it's true? I, I think it's the sort of claim that Ms Jones would make. It's not I scientifically forgot. proven. Oh, well, you don't say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's... It, it is the sort of thing she... She's, she's claimed it. She's not saying it is. No. Yeah. Do you think it's the truth? <laughs> the truth. <laughs> the truth. I, yeah, I think we think it's true. You think it's true? true. Yes. Alex Jones, was it the truth or were you telling a lie? Don't be so ridiculous. It's a lie! Oh, oh, no. No. Oh. Yes, it was a lie. Uh, Alex can't tell if someone is a good dancer by the way they smile. <laughs> All that noise uh, signals time's up. It's the end of the show. I can reveal that David's team has won by three points to two. <laughs> But it's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week this week is Alex Jones. <laughs> well done, Alex. Beautiful, intelligent and gorgeous Welsh accent and eyes you could drown in. That's what she said to me, and I'm starting to think she didn't mean any of it. Good night. <laughs> So it's comedy all the way tonight here on BBC One. Up next, Have I Got News For You is back with a new series and Stephen Mangan in the hosting chair, followed by all new Not Going Out as Lee Mack returns and he's rocking out at 9.30.